Welcome to another edition of Visual X Masterclass for both grade 12 and grade 11 will benefit immensely in these sessions. I am Mr. Spusiso Kanyele from Lamont Villa High School. Let's kick, let's kick start this main topic called uh, the financial math. It's part of your paper one. This is the topic whether that can determine whether you get your A or not. Because if you master this section, you are definitely going to do well in your mathematics paper one paper. It's called Maths of Finance. It's about 15 marks in your final examination and these are very strong 15 marks because if you can't get them, you are, you are, you are likely not to get your distinction. It's, it's only made out of five formulae, only five formulae. The background. It is important that your English must be sound in this topic especially the comprehension skills because what you read you must understand what it means then you interpret it it is advisable that when you do this particular topic you always collect your data you say what you have and you know what you're looking for I said it is made out of only five formulae you cannot fail to master these five formulae and fortunately for you these four formulae are given in your formula sheet the first one is called simple interest it has got a formula which is a is equal to p into 1 plus i times n that's a simple interest it, 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 it the next one is called the compound interest i've put an asterisk there because you will definitely find this in your final exam it is a is equals to p into 1 plus i to raised to the power n these are real life these are real life uh, lessons if you master this you can manage your finances better in real life let's talk about these variables a is the total amount at the end of the investment period. If you put a particular amount of money for a particular time, at the end with interest, that amount of money is called A, which is the total amount at the end of the investment period. P, P is the principal amount, the money that you deposit in the bank uh, for a particular period so that it gain interest. The original amount, others call it the capital, that you put in, deposit into a bank or any financial institution so that it may gain interest. Then what is I? Your I is your interest rate. All financial institutions, they, 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 they give a certain uh, in rate of interest. It is usually in a percentage form. And N is the number of years. But I don't want us only to think of it as the number of years, because that might deceive us. It is the number of times that interest is compounded in that particular uh, investment. That is N. It is the same thing there, it is the same thing there. Whether, when you see N, it means the same thing here, and the eyes. The top part, the first two, we usually do them in grade 9, 10. Then grade 11 and 12, you go to this next topic, I refer to them as annuities. Annuities. This is where you start to pay regular payments. What is future value? A future value, this, the diff, this will all, you can find future value there, you can find future value here. With the difference between these two future values is that in this particular one, it's where you deposit an amount of money and leave it there. You don't make regular payments. But in this future value, you, 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 you make regular payments all the time. For an example, if I'm investing for my child's education, I'll be putting maybe uh, 500 rand every month, 500 rand every month. That, that, that comes into annuities where you pay regular installments. In other words, with annuities, these two, they've got regular payments that you pay every month. This X denotes the regular payments that you pay every month. FV simply means the money that I will get in future, future value. Uh, I is the same as in the above. N is the same as in the above. And I, remember this formula, you get them in a formula sheet. What is the present value? What's the difference between the future value and the present value? The future value, if I'm putting aside an amount of money all the time, I'm putting this amount all, all the time and I'll be getting it in future, it's not with me. But the present value, I'm paying every month, but the money is already with me. Example, like a loan. If I take a loan from the bank, the loan will be with me presently. Hence, we refer to it as the present value. The loan will, will be with me and I'll be going back to pay it back. Hence, my N is negative there. Take note of that N because if you miss that negative of N because you're going back to pay uh, that using the, part, the, the installments in that particular transaction. Lastly, it's the effective and nominal interest rate. Uh, we'll also deal with this uh, uh, types of interest rate when, 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 you do, when you get into exam problems. 
Yeah, you might get compound increase or compound decrease. When it is compound increase, if what I'm putting in there increases at a, a, after a certain time period, it is plus here. But if, I, if it depreciates, it will be minus here. The, how do you know whether you are using simple interest or compound interest? The question will tell you. Like words like compounded, it can be monthly or quarterly, or reducing balance. Then you'll know exactly that you are dealing with a compound interest in that particular transaction. Now, I want us to go straight to, 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 to compound interest because you will definitely get it in your exam. What is it that is important about the compound interest? There is a relationship that happens between I and N. If we can master that, we'll be able to even to, to attend to these problems because it needs the background of our compound interest. Compound interest, in your exam, I said it's about 15 marks. The above might be between four to six marks. Then the rest will be coming from future value or the present value. Now, when, when you look at the, the, the compound interest, there is a relationship that happens between I and N. I want us to look at that. When we deal with the compound interest, there is a relationship that happens between I and N. Let's, let's make an example. Suppose a particular bank charges 12% uh, per annum. I want us to understand this. It, this bank charges the interest of 12% per annum. I'm saying to you, yearly, yearly how many years do we have in one year so my end there will be one if i'm following that one the interest rate will be 12 percent per annum then another bank said no we're not going to compound your interest uh, per year we're going to compound it every six months remember six months is half a year it's half, it's, it's, it's six, six months is ha half half a year the, the bank will say i'm going to compound this interest half yearly in other words, every six months. Remember, it was just a year. Now it is going to compound it every six months. How many six months do we have in one year? We have two. So you multiply this by two, which will give us two. Now watch here. My N is no longer one, now it is two. But remember, this is not two years. That is why I say we don't, I don't want you to take N as solemnly as the number of years. But it tells me how many times was the interest compounded in that particular transaction. So in this one, when you say half year, it was one year. How many half years do you have in a year? Two. So when you multiply one by two, you will get two. But if they say you are going to compound this half, half this, 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 this interest half yearly, is it going to be 12%, 12%? If we do that, it will be 12%. It will be 24%. But it was 12%, right? If you multiply here by two, then you go to your I, you divide it by two, so that you will get 6%. Now, what is this saying to me? In the first six months, in the first half year, half year, half year six months, it will be 6%. In the next six, year, uh, six months, it will be 6% again. So altogether, it will still be 12% per annum. So it is important that you must note the relationship that happens between N and I. That relationship is, part, is important. If, if you multiply N by 2, you go and divide your I by 2. That relationship is important for you to understand your compound interest. Another example, if you say, no, we are not going to compound it half yearly. We are going to compound it quarterly. Remember, it was just one year. Quarterly, how many quarters do we have in one year? We've got four, so you multiply that by four, this then will be equal to four. Remember, it was 12%. There are four quarters in a year, so you divide this one by four. So that you'll we'll get 4, 8, 12, you'll we'll get 3%. So every quarter, you, the, the interest will be 3%, 3%, 3%, until it comes to 12% per annum. So what I'm trying to emphasize here is that when you divide, when you multiply N by 4, you divide I by 4. So there's this special relationship that happens between I and N, which we must understand. Now, you'll, you'll, you will be using a lot of monthly in, in, in our financial mathematics where the, the, the compound is, where, where the interest is compounded monthly. Remember, it was just one year. Now, when we say we are going to compound it monthly, how many months do we have in one year? We've got about 12 months, so you multiply it by 12, so that I will get 1 times 12, it will be 12 uh, monthly. So what happens to, to, to I? Remember it was 12%. 
Now I will divide by the number of months, which is 12 in this case, so it will be 1% every month, so that in 12 months I will have that 12% uh, in, in, in 12 months. So there is this special relationship that happens between I, if I multiply N by 12, I've got to divide I by 12, so there is that very important relationship. If you understand what I'm explaining here, you'll never experience problems with financial debts. Of course, your comprehension skills is important. Your English becomes important in this particular case. Uh, I, I want us to, to talk about this briefly. When I multiply uh, my N by 12, what am I actually doing? I am changing it from years into months. That becomes important. When I multiply my N by 12, I am changing it from years, from years into months. At times, you will have a situation where it is compounded monthly, where you have to divide your I by 12. It will give you a particular percentage. But you'll find that in that particular transaction, we're not going to give you your, 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 your N in years, but just give you in months. You don't have to go and multiply it by 12, because in that part, it, they would have already multiplied, multiplied for you by 12. So there will be no need for you to multiply by 12. I want us to look at how they set this in the examination, starting with compound interest, then we go to annuities. Thank you.